They're beacons of luxury, much sought after by collectors. The chandelier has existed since ancient times. From Baroque to Art Nouveau, they've evolved through the centuries and today often need a little work to get their sparkle back. These pieces were designed for Louis XIV and Marie Antoinette. They were very demanding, and so now, centuries on, we really feel like we're working directly for these kings and queens. If something goes wrong, you feel you're not up to scratch, that you aren't at the same standard as the building that you have the chance to work in. These exquisite pieces adorn some of France's finest palaces. Today, it's one hanging in an 18th century mansion in Paris's Place de la Concorde, which needs restoring. Even the most beautiful of chandeliers are entitled to a facelift now and again. Here we have a chandelier that appears to be in a relatively good condition. On the upper arms, you can see there are a few crystals that are missing or broken. It's down to Jean-Louis Morin to remove this 200-year-old empire-style chandelier. It's an extremely delicate operation. The main power supply is always on, so you can easily get an electric shock. Jean-Louis and his team move this colossal 80-kilogram light by hand. It's a risky move, because with just one wrong step, the thousands of crystal pendants could shatter into smithereens. It's a tight squeeze. Hang on, it's okay. 700 kilometers away in the southern Luberon region, this chandelier will be given a second youth. This workshop houses some of the best treasures of the history of France and that of the world. The owner, Regis Mathieu, has just finished rebuilding a masterpiece. Impressive. Five meters wide and weighing half a ton, this chandelier from Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral was designed in 1862 by architect Viollet le Duc. What I love in a chandelier is this mix of the heavy and the light. When you see a cloud pass overhead, you have the impression that there's tons of water above you. It's the same for a chandelier. They weigh kilos and kilos. They are hung as if they were floating in the air, and this chandelier here is the absolute proof of that. There's no central court suspending it. The weight of this huge wreath of candles is divided on all the sides. Every year, some 200 stunning examples are restored here, like these chandeliers from the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles, or these from the Palace of Monaco. 25 craftsmen lovingly give them new life. The first stage of that process is the polishing. We remove all these small parts and the bronze, and then we have to restore their shine. Gregoire's skills and know-how all date back to the Renaissance period. We travel back in time and we travel with our masters. The people who worked on these lights originally, the metal workers, the architects and the designers, and we retrace their steps and actions. Some parts, though, can't be saved and need remodeling from scratch, like this attachment for an Art Deco chandelier. David is responsible for improving the gilding on this bronze part of the chandelier. He first plunges it into this golden bath. It's a very precise process, in which the temperature of the gilding is maintained thanks to these heat-retaining ping-pong balls. This bath will fix the colour of the gilding. It's not too red, it's not too pale. I think it's not bad. A brush of wax and a spot of abrasive, and we're done. David then artificially ages this piece. To do that, he has his very own technique. To age this light, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the cleaners who would have dusted and polished these pieces over the years. With their cloths, they would have cleaned here and here, so essentially the edges of the light, but not in the hollows. After 300 hours of work, the chandeliers have finally found their former splendor. The last step is to turn the lights on. 
and in order to recreate that old-fashioned glimmer of candlelight, Regis Mathieu has invented a very special bulb. Here you have that beautiful light of the time, the glow of the candle. It has the same color and intensity of a real flame. This is exactly how the original chandelier was designed to be lit. If I put modern bulbs in, everything would look flat. After working hard for hours gilding and burnishing, we just couldn't spoil the overall look like that. 